Hello students, um, I want to introduce you to the enthalpy of vaporization experiment today. So I want to begin by showing you the apparatus and then we'll, we'll walk through uh, the experiment. I'll assume that you have read the uh, section in the lab manual, so this is not about the theory and not about the calculations, but I want to show you the apparatus. So first the overview. Um, right here we have the apparatus. So the water will be in this uh, round bottom flask. You see there's a thermometer. You see there's a condenser. You see that there's a heating mantle. Um, and then over here you can see that we can have the whole system in contact with this manometer. It's an open-ended manometer, by the way. Uh, it's a mercury manometer. And also, it goes to this ballast tube, which is connected to a vacuum. So, we can establish a target pressure in here, and then we can heat uh, this, the water until it boils, and we can then record at the same time the pressure and the boiling point. So that's, that's the principle. Now, what is measured by this manometer is the difference in pressure between the internal pressure here and the pressure in the room. So the very first thing you should do before you do anything else is to read the barometer to see what the pressure in the room is. My experience is people will do the lab and get all involved and then you can easily forget to measure the barometer pressure. And if you do that, your data is worthless. Because even if you come back the next day and measure the barometer well, that's a different day. So, right over here you can see where the barometer is in the room. Um, if this is the uh, first experiment you're doing after the bomb calorimetry, this is new. If you already have done the uh, heat capacity ratio, we've already talked about the barometer. I will at the end of this whole video of the experiment append uh, a video on how to read a barometer. So right now I'll just tell you briefly, but you'll see the details then. Uh, there is a thermometer right here so you can record the temperature. The density of mercury varies with temperature, that's why that's important. So you should read that. Then um, you have a column of mercury and you basically record the height of it. The first thing you do is you'll set down here. You can set, I'm not going to give you any anything very close here but there's a cone in here and the tip of the cone needs to just touch the, the top of the pool of mercury. Now the tip of the cone is actually the bottom of this measuring device so the next thing you have to do is come over to the side and with the, adjust this knob and I'll move out of the way and this little piece right here uh, will move up and down and you'll see on the video exactly how to read the top of this from the two scales, the one on the left and the one on the right. This is called a vernier scale. So I'll leave that for the video, but uh, do remember, do that the very first thing. Okay. So let's return here, and let me just give you a few tips before we actually start. Okay. I'm going to refill this bulb with water. Um, you need in, in here a couple of boiling chips. Here are the boiling chips. These help the boiling to be even. Um, then you have a condenser. The water, once it boils, will go up, and you want it to then condense and drop back into the bowl. You don't want it to be sucked off. So you'll have to turn on the condenser. It does not have to be turned on very hard. Just, I've got it too hard right there. Just a moderate stream will be fine for your condenser. It may leak a little bit right here, don't worry about that, but a major leak would be, would be serious. Um, here's your manometer. Notice that the ruler here is in centimeters. You read it in centimeters, so of course you'll need to convert to, uh, to millimeters. Um, so when you do take pressures, I again would recommend you take a snapshot with your uh, cell phone so that you can go back and you can read it quite precisely. Um, lastly, um, I want you to notice there's a T-junction right here. 
And if you examine this closely, once you're in the lab, you'll see uh, little holes through this glass that are just like that T. So that we'll have three settings here. If you turn it in one way, you can have the vacuum pump uh, in contact with your system, but not to the atmosphere. This is to the atmosphere. If you turn this another way, you can evacuate the whole system. So you'll want to examine this quite carefully before you begin so that you understand just how to manipulate this uh, for what you want. But essentially, you'll turn the vacuum pump on by plugging it in, and um, uh, then you will establish the pressure that you want. Uh, then you will turn this so that the vacuum pump is no longer sucking on this system, and you should have a stable pressure. Okay. At that point, you will begin heating. We heat with this rheostat, so you'll turn it on, and then the setting can be low or high, and you'll heat. Okay. Um, I recommend that you start with your lowest pressure, um, because that will have the lowest boiling point. You'll get your uh, boiling, you'll record pressure and temperature and pressure at the same time once equilibrium is established. Having done that, uh, you'll heat up farther uh, to the next pressure. Now the text recommends uh, one that you take a boiling point at 200 uh, tor, that's the lowest pressure. That is simply so you get a sense of how low the boiling point actually goes with low pressure, it goes quite low. Once you've done that, you can go all the way up to 400 tor and uh, you're instructed to take uh, boiling points at 10 pressures evenly spaced between 400 and 760, you know. Um, so that's really what you need to do. So that's, I think uh, there are, the critical points here will be to use this, you have to decide what boiling looks like. You know, it should be slow and steady. It should not be too vigorous, but there should be some bubbles. You have to decide what that looks like, and then you should apply that same look for every point that you measure, okay? It is quite possible to boil too vigorously, and then you have, you're really superheated, and you're recording something that's not the boiling point of the pressure you're measuring. So you, you, you don't want to do that, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do, Probably the person who was here before wrapped some parafilm around here to keep the seal as tight as possible. Um, so you'll have to unwrap the parafilm, lower the heating level. Careful here. And then you can remove your flask. So you might probably want to keep the thermometer and the plug here on. I would say just be very careful, and then you can go and empty it out, put in some fresh deionized water and a few boiling chips, and you'll be ready to go. Uh, this is a 250 er milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, so you want it a little less than half full. This is maybe a little too full right here. Okay, so I'm going to go do that. We'll probably cut the film. Okay, so uh, I emptied the water out of the, the round bottom flask to put fresh water in. I used deionized water. I then put a few um, fresh uh, boiling chips in. It doesn't take a whole lot, just, you know, six or something like this. Put them in here. Um, I put a drop of grease on uh, the tip of the condenser. You don't want to put very much, just a little bit. Uh, too much, you know, actually get a pore seal. And put things together. I wrapped this about once and a half around, twice around with parafilm. People seem to think that will help. I haven't done a test recently, but I can tell you this, many, many layers of parafilm are not going to help. So um, that's what I did. Now um, I've got this raised up and now we're ready to do two, thing, do two things, establish the vacuum and heat. So the vacuum pump needs to be plugged in. There is, on this one, no switch. We simply plug it in. I have this adjusted so that the T is like this. Okay? So it's closed to the outside, but 
open to, you can see the pressure going down. Now we want to get into the difference about, I guess 73 to 23, something like that, right? When I turn this so it's at an angle, I have now taken the vacuum pump out of contact with the system. We have a closed system. So at this point, you may want to watch, wait a few minutes and see just how stable the pressure is. It will not be perfectly stable, but it should only be a slow drift. Uh, later on, when you take your pressure, you record temperature and pressure at the same time. I now will turn on my rheostat. I think a setting up around 50 is probably good. It's not real critical. And now we're going to wait until it starts to boil. Hello, dear students. I'm Janice Leiva, and as you might know, I'm one of the TAs from the PCHEM uh, lab. So here I'm working with Dr. Chaffield on um, doing these experiments of the entropy of vaporization of water. So now we're switching uh, roles, particularly here. And uh, I'd like to uh, show you some of uh, the um, observations that we are taking now from um, the uh, boiling of uh, water at this low uh, pressure. So as uh, you can notice from uh, the zoom in that we're seeing here, so there are um, a couple of, of many bubbles just surrounding uh, the chips, so they are indicating that we are uh, approaching uh, the boiling point of water at that particular uh, pressure. So however, we still don't have uh, the boiling. So also, if you notice the the temperature, so we are now approaching 40 uh, Celsius degrees. So uh, the the point here is like a, you you need to look carefully to the solution uh, to let's say decide when uh, you will um, collect the, the data of boiling. So when I'm saying data, the pressure and the temperature are a particular point in which the water will be boiling. Okay, I am Dennis and I have aged rapidly. <laughs> Dr. Chatfield, obviously. Uh, I think we have something that we've decided, Dennis and I is gonna look, we're gonna call this boiling. I don't know how well we can get this with the video because you have to look into the bulb and the video might... No, I think that's pretty good, okay? Um, you decide what it looks like for you, but you need to use that same picture consistently. Okay? And see the temperature, yeah, go. Now go to the manometer. So you you look at, you got the temperature and you're getting the pressure at the very same time. Okay. You can't take the pressure in advance. It's going to change. You may you, you record the pressure at the same time you record the temperature. Okay. So once you've done that, you now want to heat up. You know because you want to go to a different pressure. We're going to heat here and. I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to have to decide what I want. So this is presently at, what do we have, it's about 66, and this is at about 21. 66 minus 21 is 45, so that's 450, right? Now, atmospheric pressure is 760, so 760 minus approximately, it's going to be a little different. So 760 minus, what did I say, 440? 450. 450, okay, so that's 310, right? Okay, so we have 310 right now. Suppose that I want to change the pressure by 10, 10 torr. So we'd want to let in, adjust the pressure here by letting in suppression from the atmosphere. Okay, so that we change the pressure. And now we're going to have to heat, okay? And the next time you heat, what, what, 
we have to reestablish boiling, and that will take us to a higher boiling point. Okay. So this is the principle, and you can follow the lab manual, but you need about 10 points between 400, 400 torr and 760 torr. Okay. If there's time, you should do two runs. You have to let it cool off and then heat again. The second run, you can just start at 400 torr. You don't have to go down to 200 again. But uh, if there's not time, you'll just do one run. If there's time, you'll do two runs. So good luck, students. I hope that uh, you have a successful experiment. Okay.